I was going to say urban, and that's not right. A <laughs> rural. real rural. Rural. Grew up rural. around some horses, y'all. <laughs> Where are we? Like, what town are we in? Uh, sh outside of Charlottesville, Virginia. We are at Ragged Branch. We've got three and a half bourbons. So we're going to save the half for, for later. It's a special one. We have their signature bourbon, their signature bottled in bond, um, and then their cowboy cut here. These are all five years um, aged. I will say this property is gorgeous. Yeah, I think we should take a minute to appreciate that. It's somehow a lovely day, even though it's December. It is quite breathtaking. I haven't touched any of this yet, but I think it would be worth a visit just from the grounds. It is a very sunny day early in December and yeah, couldn't gorgeous. wait to get outside. Um, the pulling up to the property feels like pulling up to an Airbnb. Um, it makes you want to linger. We're up on the top of a hill overlooking the mountains. If you find yourself close by, you should definitely come and check it out, even if it's just to grab a cocktail and sit in the sun for a few hours. Yeah, I'm excited about the bourbons too. They smell delicious. Um, to be fair, I've already had a, a sip of the signature bourbon. Um, it's a you know, decent rye mash bill, 68, 16, and 16 barley. Um, really smell the barley um, on the nose, and that comes through as like a, a, a hay or straw, very vegetal. Not off-putting in any way, um, but also not sweet. Um, like you would expect like a, a corn barley it reminds me a lot of a uh, a Wheeler's Raid store pick I have at home um, which I believe is also high mar high barley uh, malted barley mash um, bill uh, love that love the nose I'm curious what you think about the taste because it's gonna be a little bit different than some yeah. some bourbons you've had I just I was listening to him say it's not sweet but I do smell like a soft very soft but caramel mm. caramel on the end especially um i am nervous now that he said it's not going to taste like it smells rice tend to have a little bit of spiciness to them which i tend to like around especially this time of the year yeah this is gonna have rye in the mash but it's not gonna t it's not gonna drink like a rye What do you think about that one? It's interesting. So one of their notes on the menu has cherry wood uh, on the nose. I, I I taste a bit of smoke though. Mm. Like well, it I, says the char. The char is evident. Mm -hmm. I think the first thing that kind of caught me off guard, though, and maybe I didn't take a look very well at the the thickness, the the mouth feel is kind of mediocre, actually. It's like, mm -hmm. although there's some legs on the glass. Yeah, it's not super viscous. I wouldn't yeah. call it thin either. No, it's kind of in the middle. Well, maybe even squarely in the middle. Sorry, I took it from you. It's okay. I was stealing my <laughs> bourbon. Just tasting, not stealing. It smell. I can't get over the smell. The smell is so good. I, yeah, the smell I, I, the is The more really I nice. smell it, the more I like it. It smells like you've been in like a rich person's closet, like a master closet, like and they cedar? have yeah, they have like the cedar, I have? specifically <laughs> like the shoehorn, the sh the things that go in oh, your shoes. That's not interesting. What is it? What are those right? called? It's not that's a shoehorn. Right. No, it is. No, the shoehorn is what they what you use to put a shoe on. The, the thing. <laughs> look yeah, good. it looks like a shoe. Yeah. Nobody really uses those. No. But that's what it smells like bald, to me. And you do see them in closets. I appreciate that it is sweet on the nose, but it isn't overly sweet and it doesn't taste, it doesn't smell like a fake sweet either. No. So I'll read you their blurb. Um, robust grain aroma. Pepper a little bit. 
Yes, light pepper. Yeah. Um, robust grain aroma, spicy rye. Oh, yeah, definitely grain now that you say the word. Vanilla marzipan. Oh. And a scent of smoking wild cherry wood. It tickles the, the tongue with spicy rye and vanilla tones. Finishes smoothly and sweetly. After adding a spoonful of water, the fragrance of sweet tobacco comes through and opens the palate to a softer spice, leaving a pleasant flavor of caramel corn. This rye bourbon is excellent in cocktails, actuating flavors of all cocktail agreements, uh, agre ingredients. Sorry, um, It is 90 proof. It is very, very easy drinking because of that low proof. Yeah. Um, probably not something that I would just sit down and want to pour, but I could see how it would make a really great mixer. Oh, it'd be a fantastic mixer. Mm -hmm. um, I, I even like it neat. If it if it wasn't so distinct smelling, I would it would be a pounder. Like afternoon on the weekend, watching a ball game, something like that. You just pour it and not even think about the proof. Like it's very very easy drinking. Sounds dangerous. It would be dangerous. But the smell is what would keep you trying in tune with what you're drinking. Right. Because you keep going back hoping that you're gonna get that marzipan cookie yeah and then you don't um i get a lot of malt there as well if you're not a malt fan this probably isn't for you but um uh i am and and do like it uh next up is the signature bottled and bond bourbon so obviously this is going to be bonded 100 proof um spent uh four years in a three char uh one year in a four char so pretty dark um you know much darker than kind of what we just yeah, we drank should. Uh, these are all the same year they're all five years five years old it has this so smelling this is the signature bottle and bond bourbon um it's same mash bill uh so the the difference here is going to be the hunter proof so it's exactly the same even that extra char uh we don't have char notes on the signature bourbon that's a good question though and the color is very different so i bet it's this one hasn't does not have that extra char because this was not nearly yeah that's dark. probably true it's very similar it's similar but it is like a deeper yeah like a more subtle sweetness and deeper yeah maybe almost burnt caramel instead of like mm -hmm. a caramel candy yeah i was gonna say the the like hay straw malt characteristics that are so strong in the first are a little bit more muted which allows those burnt caramels and deeper flavors to, to come through Isn't whereas here they might be suppressed if they're present at all is it crazy that i feel like there's a little stone fruit in there no uh we're splitting a tasting flight uh these three and then we got a splash of another one um 15 bucks super affordable yeah you like that better? i like that a lot better. Oh, okay that's and i like the first one my turn then um the higher proof point does take up a lot of, you know, kind of notch up a lot of the flavors, even though, you know, like I was mentioning on the nose, some of those notes were, were, were muted. Uh, I don't think that's true on the palate. Um, so if you aren't a bourbon lover or you want to become one or you're interested, this guy out of what we've had so far, would appeal to you mm -hmm. would be a good place to start this has that kind of kentucky hug a little bit a little bit more of a burn it kind of feels a little bit more like some of the intimidating parts that come to whiskey sometimes especially for uh, the females um, <laughs> but i kind of get excited when it has that little bit of spice at the end i like i like for the calories to count and this feels like bourbon in my mouth. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it definitely is, you know, obviously it's it's bourbon, it's bottom mm -hmm. and bond. Um, it drinks hotter than 100 mm -hmm. to me. I get a little bit of the tobacco note I like in bourbons. Um, a little heavier oak. Uh, that's probably from that. Extra char. The dot up char, yeah. This is like a Sunday afternoon, <laughs> you know, uh, you know post-church, watching football, whatever. Um, this is why isn't the week over yet? Not yeah, quite celebrated. This is a hump day, hump day bourbon. Maybe <laughs> yeah. we're working our way to Friday night uh, between these next couple. Oh wow! Uh -oh. Yeah, 
yeah as that um so this is really cool the mash bill on all three of these is the same so 68 percent corn 16 percent uh rye 16 percent malted barley but the the proof is ratcheted up so we started with 90 we went to 100 now we're at 115 ish um at least uh it says variable so um but it, it's cowboy cut or barrel proof so um it's at that 115 mark or higher um and i think kind of a random side note too is this is a really good way to like educate yourself or to yeah. explore a particular type of something by just changing one of the variables instead of being 14 different bottles from all different distilleries all different mash fields yep. this kind of like starts to explore what you might like or what you might not like um yeah, that's a great point. And it's true of not just bourbon, like wine, chocolate, cheese, like doing a side-by-side -side comparison is, yeah, Cause, unbeatable. Because I'm here personally almost all the time here for the experience or like just a little bit of education. I'm not necessarily here to find something that I'm going to pour myself just for the heck of it. Um, this isn't going to be my, my go-to spirit, but um, I love to learn. And so this is really interesting when it's just one thing different for me. Okay, but well I feel like this one's back a bit sweet. Yeah, I'm, I'm still processing that one. Maybe apple, which is, didn't find that at all. A little bit of stone fruit here, but feel like more green apple here. So when you say stone fruit on this, were you thinking... Like darker red things, yeah. almost like you would find in a wine glass. Yeah, these are very wine-esque bourbons, actually. The tobacco note, the the stone fruit the red fruit on this one that um caramel candy part is almost gone the smoke is back yeah it's got some smoke the tobacco is stronger in this one for me than the other two yeah yeah i didn't get the tobacco note on the, the first one at all like the the grain but more specifically the grain that you feed your horse which sometimes is barley mm -hmm. and oats is as is, is here. I can see someone feeding their horse as I sniff the glass. This is uh, what did he say? Farm to flask. Mm -hmm. I, I like that mm -hmm. a lot. Um, we're we're literally on a working farm right now. Yeah, they're small. They're young. Like this is their life, and that always makes it more personable. Mm -hmm. And always feels special to me. I prefer to be somewhere like this all day long over the really large distilleries even though you tend to learn a lot and they do it well yeah but this just feels like you're at someone's home yeah i would agree this one is my personal favorite the third so far yeah i'm getting there too um one thing you'll learn about me miranda obviously knows this but um i'm not a huge chocolate fan and i get a chocolate note here oh i missed it yeah oh, give me that chocolate <laughs> all right save you a little bit thanks this is just the last chocolate. Square. Yeah, it's in that tobacco family, yeah, which is surprising because I love the tobacco note, but I, yeah. I grew up in a real, ur um, oh gosh, I was going to say urban and that's not right. A <laughs> rural. real rural. Rural. I grew up rural. around some horses, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and I just can't get over it. It really smells like a barn, not in an off-putting way. No but an almost comforting way, very nostalgia. That's fun, I like that. Yeah, I like that one too. Last but not least, we have a special treat. Uh, the three that we were drinking earlier, they um, were all regularly available year round. Um, this one is you know, one to two barrels, that the gentleman was saying, um, you know, once a year basically. Uh, and this is a honey barreled bourbon. So they take the, uh, the bottle and bong, um, and then they put it in a uh, used honey barrels. They don't add any extra honey or anything like that, um, but it should take on some characteristics of, of that sweetness, the honey, um, the like deep flavors that you get from natural honey. And so excited to dive into this one. Yeah, that's got all the right flavors from the cowboy cut that were, that were like more muted, a little bit more complex, but at the same time, it's got the viscosity that you can get from a honey barrel, right? One of the things that a honey barrel does is not just add a little bit extra sweetness, but it introduces a little bit, um, you know, more uh, viscosity into the into the liquid. Mm. And that's what I'm getting here. It's very coating of the mouth, very easy drinking. Um, 
you know, it does have that, that kind of oily texture in, in the best of ways. Um, so really excited about, about this one and like this one a lot. Yeah, I agree with that. It does change the mouthfeel a lot. It doesn't actually change the sweetness yeah. at all. You get a lot of the same notes, a lot of the same sweetness. Now, um, on the nose, I do smell the honey. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't necessarily taste it. I feel it and I smell it. And it's still the barn and still right there. That's nice. Yeah, it's nice. I like it a lot. Um, so out of these four, which one? Uh, if I wanted to add to my collection, it would be the last one. And I'd probably pick up the honey just because it's only available right now. And we're passing through. I think it's a good, fun piece to add to the collection that's a story, too. Yeah, so uh, I'd agree with that. If you're local, pick up a couple few bottles of the first of the of their standard stuff. You can come back and refill. It's a great, you know, kind of everyday drinker for a special special bottles, the cowboy cut, the the honey, uh, if you happen to be here when uh, when it's available, definitely pick up a bottle of those. Um, and I think we're probably about to go do that right now. Mm -hmm. So, appreciate you coming along. Uh, like, comment, subscribe down below, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. See you later.